President Sul Ramaphosa has warned against baseless attacks on the judiciary. The president says attacking the courts without evidence undermines public confidence in the country's judges. He has called on anyone who has evidence of any wrongdoing by any judge to come forward. Uh, the president's defense of the judiciary comes after former President Jacob Zuma questioned the courts following his defiance of an order by the Constitutional Court compelling him to appear before the Zondo Commission. Now, to unpack this a bit further, we are joined by Professor Pierre de Foss, who is a constitutional law expert. A very good afternoon to you, Prof, and good to have you with us. Uh, talk to us about, I guess, the, the latitude that one has to exercise their constitutional right of expressing a discontent, but also, in tandem with that, the responsibility that one also has to one's country and I guess the, the rule of law and the, the apex court too? Well, obviously the, one has a, a, a right to criticize any judgment, um, to criticize even the, the reasoning of the, the specific judge. Um, of course, it must be based on what actually was said in the judgment. You cannot make things up. Um, what, where it becomes more difficult is where you make general accusations against the judiciary or against unnamed judges. Um, that is, that is uh, normally not uh, uh, permitted. What one needs to do, if there is a specific issue with a specific judge, one, as the president pointed out, you can go to the Judicial Service Commission, you can lay a formal complaint, as has happened many times in South Africa, and they will then deal with this. Um, the problem is, is where people do not criticize the, the judiciary generally said for being not uh, against poor people or whatever the case might be. That is also acceptable. They make allegations that cannot be proven or disproven. And so the problem then is that one uh, creates a situation in which the legitimacy of the court is being called into question and attacked. And uh, that is not uh, in the interest of the constitution of the markets. So, so why then do you believe that uh, these type of statements are being made without the evidence uh, on the ground? What, what is the end game there? What is to be gained by doing that? Yeah. So people who, who attack the judiciary do so almost always, um, in our context at least, for personal reasons. It is not about ideology. Um, which I think would be far better because then you can have a real discussion. Is the court too conservative? Is it too radical? Whatever the case might be. They do it because they are worried that the court is going to rule against them or against individuals that they support. So they want to delegitimize um, the, the, the decision before it even is made so that they can uh, paint themselves as a victim of some kind of conspiracy or injustice or whatever the case might be. So it's a rather cynical ploy normally, um, especially if it's not um, accompanied by some kind of ideological and reasoned engagement with what the courts actually have said and why, and an argument why th those courts might have been wrong. Uh, Professor, time is not on our side. I'm going to have to let you go in just a moment. But, you know, every coin has two sides here. Uh, there is the, the intention and, and the possible scenario that you paint, but then we also have, you know, perhaps seen and heard of instances where there actually has been interference within um, the, the judiciary. Uh, talk to us uh, about that and how one mitigates those two. Yeah. So there's been cases, the, the one most famous case is, of course, the, the complaint that was lodged against the judge president of the Western Cape. The allegation is that he tried to interfere with the constitutional court judges in favor of former president Jacob Zuma. What happened there is the correct process. It was taken to the Judicial Service Commission. Unfortunately, for many different reasons, they have taken many, very many years to deal with the matter. We are waiting now the Judicial Conduct Tribunal outcome. Um, but that is perfectly, um, if there is such a thing and if there's a credible accusation, then obviously it's very important for the judiciary that it is addressed and that it's investigated um, because one, do, one does not want and it, one must not ju um, justify a, a judge sitting on the court where that judge has acted in a way that, it is, that is not impartial, that creates the perception 
of bias or corruption or whatever the case may be. Professor, thank you so much uh, for your insight this afternoon. Very much appreciated. Professor Pierre de Foss there uh, basically saying make the accusations, uh, but come up with the, the evidence. Uh, let it be ventilated with, within the various uh, structures and, and then uh, the pursuant action taken.